So I will upload it somewhere either in YouTube or uh, in in a drive or whatever feasible okay so geology in uh, it's a branch okay so it's a in Greek it's a uh, study of art the branch of science which basically dealing the study of art and when I'm say when I'm saying study of art that means it comprises of the whole art its origin its structure tectonic features tectonic events there are several geomorphological process several geological process and it has several branches so geology has total 14 branches including physical geology crystallography mineralogy petrology structural geology stratigraphy paleontology so uh, the most important ones are uh, those are uh, every part is very important for uh, with respect to everyone but uh, let me give you a brief idea about each of the branches and why these branches are required. First one is the physical geology. Okay, interdisciplinary is geophysics, uh, geochemistry, and then uh, subject specific uh, geology are the civil engineering geology, petroleum geology, resources engineering. Okay, so for the physical geology, you will be dealing with say, various processes of physical agents. What are the physical agents? I want you to remember this wind, water, glacier and sea waves. Okay. So these waves uh, are forming several landforms. These are several erosional, accretional activity uh, are happening. So it basically deals with the process involves or the landforms are formed due to these physical agents that will be discussed in physical geologic uh, subjects. So how river uh, is creating several landforms, how river is creating delta kind of structure you know uh, some of you might know or heard of sundarbans so sundarban is the largest delta uh, all over the world so how these are formed that will be discussed in the physical geology another thing will be discussed that is the plate tectonics what is plate tectonic i'm coming later okay next is the crystallography it's kind of solid state physics okay so here you will be uh, using the x-ray diffraction technique uh, the common name or the regular name is XRD or XRF. Uh, civil engineering students uh, or civil engineering people generally familiar with uh, the XRD. Uh, they are they test the soil generally when they do uh, for a, or when they go for a geotechnical um, study or geotechnical investigation. Then they it's go for clay mineralogy. Yes. Clay mineralogy. What? Yes, you okay. test in a clay mineralogy, but you do uh, XRT, XRF? Yes, so uh, I know this because uh, from IIT Kharagpur Civil Engineering Department, they got one XRD equipment. So that I know that uh, they are basically checking the XL reflections of several uh, crystals and crystal can be divided, cubic, tetragonal, that part you know. So this is a branch of geology which basically uh, discuss the um, crystal this is the study of the crystal branch okay and this crystal uh, crystallography is also very important in case of gemology so the part of crystallography is gemology so that part is only dealing with the gems the gemstone we use uh, in our hand okay okay so that's the like the um, um, like like diamond okay so that's part of gemology a gemologist can tell you uh, this diamond is real or what should be the valuation of this diamond next is the mineralogy so it's a branch of geology that study of the minerals what is minerals I'm coming to that okay so minerals is a natural aggregates and that will be discussed so this branch deals with the study of the formation how you can extract uh, the mineralogy how uh, the minerals are formed within as a ore okay uh, its occurrence aggregation and its property will be deal in the mineralogy subject petrology is very much important for petroleum geology that petrology means it's a study of rock and you will uh, you might know or you sh should know that the petroleum generally formed or the formation of petroleum or the storage of the petroleum for the for the first class I'm using this term the storage 
term okay so there is another uh, mm, more geologically accurate term or um, petroleum geologically accurate term is there that is called reservoir i'm not uh, coining that term now but for here the storage of the petroleum and how the petroleum migrates and how generally petroleum formation happened to understand that you have to understand the rock type and the study of rocks basically discussed in petrology uh, topic so the petrology part i'll be discussing in details or uh, means not that uh, not kind of details like the ug class i i'm taking but the but i'll give you a brief idea about the petrology next is the structural geology uh, this is also very important for petroleum formation structural geology plays an important role later in uh, in this course you will be seeing that uh, the anticline structure or the syncline structure that you don't know i am assuming as at this point are very much helpful for storing the or acting as a reservoir so there are some classification which type of rock for that you should have the petrology knowledge and what kind of structure can contain petroleum that for that you will be or uh, looking after the structural geological knowledge now is the stratigraphy means strata means layer so it's a branch of uh, geology that deals of the study of the stratified rocks so what are the stratified rocks generally sedimentary rocks are the stratified rocks and uh, their correlations are discussed in stratigraphy branch paleontology is the fossil study i think everyone is have seen the jurassic park movie or have heard of it so jurassic is a uh, is a age where dinosaur was uh, actually existed okay so as a branch of geology it basically deals uh, with the study of the fossils when it's a study of fossils is called the paleontology then there is historical geology economic geology when i'm talking about some profit when uh, the, this is a branch of geology when i'm talking about the ore extraction and all i'm talking about profit then it's called the economic geology so the study of mineral rocks and materials of economic importance like coal and petroleum or other minerals okay so that's called uh, that branch is called the economic geology engineering geology is there engineering geology is very uh, is a part uh, actually i'm teaching uh, this topic also to the civil engineering ug students and uh, there is a chapter for them is the engineering geology and this engineering geology is very much important to so suppose you were uh, you go for a uh, for constructing a dam so other than civil engineering guys you will have a engineering geologist with you so he, he or she will estimate or evaluate the site condition so how you will he will evaluate the site condition suppose you have a bedrock you got a, ro a rock and uh, on this rock you will be building something so the engineering geologist will evaluate is this rock fractured or not what is the condition how much load it can take if not what can uh, what uh, what remedial measures you should take so that's the report will be coming from the engineering geologist then uh, if uh, engineering geologist give you a green signal then general civil engineering people go and they do their thing okay that's the branch totally related or dedicated for uh, geological aspect in civil engineering project mostly there is mining geology there is civil engineering geology another geomorphology is the study of the landforms how it appears if you are seeing a landform suppose you are seeing a delta or you are seeing a cross section means you are seeing a uh, uh, what i can say suppose someone dig a trench okay due to uh, some railway line they will be putting and you are seeing some stratification you are seeing some layer and by seeing the layer you are seeing that uh, uh, is called the landscape detective geomorphologists are called the landscape detective by seeing the land they are uh, telling you the story so that's happened that happened that uh, didn't happen okay so that's the branch of geomorphology and hydrology is related to the surface water atmospheric water and the ground water okay 
photogeology is a remote sensing study it's a kind of interdisciplinary subject you can say and uh, this study basically involves satellite images the processing and from the satellite images you will be saying okay this is the this much of water body is there the area surface area of the water body you can find or the forestation deforestation can be estimated from this remote sensing, sensing study okay like this then uh, geophysics is that geophysics is the application of method of physics to the study of the earth so in geophysics what do we do we generally take the theories from physics like gravitational uh, force uh, or the gravitational theory or the magnetic theory or the electromagnetic theory this theory has been applied it's a apply, applied field of the physics you can consider to study the subsurface and subsurface processes so you will be exploring or you will be imaging the subsurface you will be scanning the subsurface with the help of physics uh, physics principles so that is the geophysics condition that's the geophysics uh, branch so i'm not discussing what is solid earth and all now let's discuss about the earth structure this is very much important um for you so uh, you might know that i'm taking a slice of the spherical earth and uh, the radius is this is the surface of the earth i'm writing as zero kilometer is six six three seven one kilometer the radius of earth is six three seven one kilometer this is the center center of the earth okay the top layer what you are seeing that is called your crust that is the crust so top layer whatever you are seeing that is your crust and the crust has a thickness around uh, 38 to 40 kilometer in continent and in the oceanic case uh, so oceanic case may kya hoga what will happen there will be some depression kind of thing here okay that's the ocean water so here the thickness would be the thickness means this one the thickness would be 6 to 8 kilometer that is crust it's called crust below crust you have another layer that is called mantle and you have another layer, uh, layer uh, that is called core now core could be divided into two part mantle also could be divided into two part uh, this is the boundary is called the core mantle boundary at 2891 kilometer okay so mantle can also be divided into two part upper mantle and lower mantle core can be divided into two part one is your uh, inner core so i'm writing here in the initials ic and this one is the outer core and outer core is consisted of fluid okay and this fluid is rotating anti clockwise direction and due to this fluid uh, structure or fluid condition of the outer core we generally have the magnetic field we generally have the earth magnetic field and earth magnetic field is acting like a protective blanket around the earth it basically repels the harmful rays you you won't believe that most percentage the radiation or the harmful radiation what coming from the earth most percentages are reflected back or most per percentages are repelled from this boundary this protective blanket van allen belt is there magnetic shield is there i'm not going in the details of that because of that that harmful rays are not coming okay so it's a acti is act like a protective shield so 6371 kilometer is the total radius at 2.891 you have the core mental boundary uh, in short i'll be saying cmb and the crust is of 38 to 40 uh, kilometer okay and this crust uh, be, be beneath this crust we have a partially deformed layer partially deformed or partially melted layer is there so if this layer is partially melted 
like a soup kind of structure is there okay so what will happen <coughs> there is a hypothesis uh, which has been proved uh, uh, over the years and it's most accepted hypothesis that's called the plate tectonic so we are we are considering that uh, the our crust is made up of several plates to be specific 12 major plates are there and several minor plates are there so above this this layer this partially molten layer is called the asthenosphere what it's called it's called asthenosphere let me show you the figure so this core uh, from 5150 you have a outer core and inner core boundary the black region is the inner core and it's a metallic core generally con consisted of iron okay iron and nickel flu outer core is the fluid state and to at 2891 kilometer you are having a core mental boundary so crust is 38 to 40 kilometer thick uh, for the continent condition for the oceanic con condition crust is 6 to 8 kilometer thick below of which you have a partially molten layer okay so because of this partially molten layer what happened so uh, solid ke niche if you are putting a solid and there is a uh, a thin layer of water what will happen it can move easily same things are happening they have uh, generally people have considered the entire earth crushed into 12 major plates and several minor plates like the uh, south american plates african plates these are the major plate indian plate is there so and these plates are moving maybe the uh, movement or the uh, the rate of the movement is very low like five millimeter per year but it's moving and due to this movement earthquake happen okay and due to this earth movement earthquakes generally happen so what is an earthquake earthquake is the sudden release of energy which was accumulating over the years so over the year the plate is moving uh, th that that uh, i'm not discussing at this point Later, if I got a chance, then I will discuss what is earthquake and how this is formed. Got it? Up to this. Now, few parameters you should know. Because you are not uh, from geology. First one is the porosity. Okay. Consider a rock sample. I am taking the cross section. A rock sample and the uh, grains are these are the grain size when the grains are formed okay uh, one thing happened here uh, that there is a void space in between the arrangement suppose is a, in a basket you are keeping some uh, ping pong balls okay so in that ping pong balls uh, and, and you filled up that basket so it was not possible to fill that basket up with another ping pong ball and you you have just filled it up but if you pour sand or if you pour water it will be stored in between the pore spaces okay so there is a pore space in between them and pore space or void space so what is porosity porosity has a simple example or simple consideration that is the total void space that volume you can get divided by the total volume so uh, the total void space is vp let's say and the total volume is vt it's generally considered as the total porosity total porosity is basically um, constituted of two type of porosity and these terms are very important okay so when i'll discuss about petroleum geology porosity and permeability, permeability plays an important role and depending on the porosity and permeability you can estimate uh, how much of storage uh, and the, is this reservoir c these things are uh, these things as a economical uh, importance the petroleum part okay so whenever if the storage volume is very small then i probably won't go for the extraction kyunki mujhe profit nahi hoga and I need the profit so for that you have to estimate the porosity and permeability if your rock doesn't have the porous space or more pore space 
then how would it uh, how can it be a uh, good reservoir if porosity is greater than 25 percent is generally expressed in uh, percent percentage so it will be multiplied with 100 so if it's greater than 25 percent then it will be a good petroleum bearing rock so for this reason you have to understand what is porosity and this total porosity has two components one is the primary porosity another one is the secondary porosity so phi t equals to phi p plus phi s so what is phi p phi p is your primary porosity and this primary porosity generally uh, denote or uh, generally denoting um, the porosity or the void space when when the rock is forming there is a arrangement of the grains at that position and the rocks are formed when this thing happen that the, during the origin or at the origin of time there should be a, some post process and the total uh, uh, or that the void space developed during the origin divided by total volume will be your phi p that is the primary porosity and secondary porosity when the porosity or the porous spaces de uh, are developed later like limestone chemistry people might know uh, better than me that limestone is made up of calcium carbonate limestone jo chuna pathar bolte hum log jisse chuna banta hai na so limestone has a reactive property with water calcium carbonate generally formed calcium bicarbonate okay so lht plus h2o you can color so when this reaction happen what will happen it will uh, suppose uh, this is a chunk of rock uh, in this portion the reaction is happening so it will make a hole it's called a vag. It may uh, make a hole or vag or a large pore, pore spaces, and these uh, pores are developed after that uh, development of the rock. So, when it's developed after the development, that's called the secondary porosity. And total porosity is the total volume you are total void space you are considering. Got it? Is this clear to everyone? So intergranular or intercrystalline, so initial jo form hota hai, usse jo uh, porosity nikal ke aata hai, that's called the primary porosity. And for the secondary porosity, it's developed after the rock has formed. And it's a made of vags fracture, this is called the secondary porosity. Next Im uh, important thing is that, uh, that the permeability. To, to understand permeability, let's uh, take an example. Hmm. Suppose two cases I'm considering case number one and this is case number two, and this is made up of uh, some mineral grains like this. up to this let's say uh, this is the and this is case number two where you have this kind of structures and both the cases i am assuming the void spaces void spaces v p is equal both the cases okay so now i'll be filling this case uh, I'll be filling this uh, sketch too with some liquid. Let's say some water. I'm pouring it, and here I'm pouring in some water. See, if I pour water here, it's not traveling. If I pour water here, this is not traveling. If I pour water here, this is not traveling. This is not traveling. What is the reason? Because these pores are not interconnected, and for petroleum and all, you should have a interconnected structure. And that thing, how the pores are interconnected, that is described by the permeability. Permeability tells you 
how easy a fluid of certain viscosity can travel from one point to another in a rock body that's called the permeability okay so permeability uh, uh, basically uh, so see the porosity might be equal for both the cases but they are not the permeability in this case for the second case is less than the third case here porosity suppose both the cases porosity are same so permeability here would be higher for the third case for the second case the porosity uh, permeability will be lower okay because the interconnectivity is not prominent for the second case so what is permeability is refers to how connected pore spaces are and this is very important for uh, oil migration if the oil blocks in one position how could it will store in a basin like or any uh, in the reservoir your rock should be porous and permeable enough to pass that liquid that uh, that means uh, the uh, um, that means the petroleum uh, or the petrol or diesel or the gas it should be passing that uh, that that fluid should be passing through that rock body in a good fashion so porosity and permeability are two important factor to index two important properties of rock and it can be estimated from the darcy's law so it's a darcy's law of porosity uh, uh, permeability estimation so initially q means the so q amount or capital q amount of uh, um, Uh, fluid is passing through this pore in t time so the rate will be small q equals to q by t and it will be proportional to 1 by mu the viscosity of the fluid it will be proportional to a by l okay surface area by length it will be proportional to the pressure difference so p1 and p2 so if this is a higher pressure in the left side the right side you have p2 then delta p is the pressure difference okay so small q will be uh, when you are equating both side you are removing the proportionality constant then you will be multiplying with kappa or k small k in that matter it's called the permeability the unit of permeability of milli darcy what was the unit of uh, porosity what should be the unit of porosity velocity <laughs> Uh, porosity i am asking it's a unit less yes because it's the ratio of two void spaces or two spaces or two volume okay so that porosity is generally un yes it's a unit less or dimension less generally we express it by percentage but for here the um, unit is darcy's okay in case you got confused uh, with the fluid dynamics and this is the darcy's uh, law of hydraulic gradient what do you know and this is the darcy's law for permeability okay now strength so what do you understand by strength strength is the uh, is the resistance to the permanent deformation by the flow or fracture okay so yes Yes, yes. This one, this one you might read. Previous in previous slide you have showed that for me it means uh, uh, viscosity will be the factor. Yes. That that is I think that intrinsic permeability that is K by mu is intrinsic permeability. You are talking about K by mu. If you are defining uh, permeability, see, is the permeability is the intrinsic thing. when you are seeing the yes it's the intrinsic permeability permeability porosity is the intrinsic property of a rock okay so k by u uh, mu is not the permeability permeability is k this k or kappa whatever you say this is the permeability term and k by mu could be the um, effective uh, so i'm considering when i am um, representing or presenting this equation that means i am considering mu is fixed for every uh, uh, mu is fixed for the fluid property yes it's the fluid properties depend on 
C is depend on the the k value is the permeability for a particular fluid of viscosity mu. So I am considering the viscosity is constant. Then I am saying k is the permeability. Constant means for a particular fluid, like for petroleum. Petroleum का कोई viscosity रहेगा of that fluid. ओके फ्रॉम दे आर यू कैन इजीली कैलकुलेट द के वैल्यू फॉर अ पार्टिकुलर फ्लूड द के वल बी दिस वन के इज द इंटेंसिक प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ के इज द इंटेंसिक प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ ऑफ ए रॉक स्ट्रक्चर और रॉक बॉडी नॉट द के बाई म्यू जस्ट लाइक रेजिस्टिविटी किसी का होता नहीं है वेन यू आर कंसीडरिंग द टेम्परेचर कॉन्स्टेंट रेजिस्टिविटी ऑफ सर्टेन मेटेरियल इज दिस मच सिमिलरली is a pore of a uh, few micrometer diameter what will happen what type kind of flow you can expect is it a turbulent flow in, sir in case of rock i think the flow will be the turbulent hey, how 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 uh, uh, you are from which branch sir i am from civil engineering civil engineering right so how uh, you will get a turbulent flow from uh, uh, turbulent flow for if the um pipe your pipe is of uh, micrometer or nanometer diameter how you could get a uh, turbulent flow is it possible to renold number i will yes you are considering the renold number i know you will be considering eta equals to uh, greater than 1000 right no sir in case of soil we uh. we assume that renold number is less than 1 then it will be the laminar flow yes 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 So when when generally physically tell me when you will get a turbulent flow. Physically tell me so. No no no. A, what happened in the pore spaces? Just read it and uh, let me know in the next class. What's uh, your name? The space is very small. Yes. So uh, there will be no turbulent. turbulent yes. Laminar flow is there because the space is less. Less yes. Mechanical people. Yes. So just read it and just let me know. Okay. Now strength. Uh, and one more thing. I'm. Um, you have seen that. Uh, qualitatively, strength can be defined as the resistance to the permanent deformation by flow and fracture. What do you mean by flow? Flow is the change in deformation. It's a. It's a. It's from the elasticity theory. that i'll be discussing after some time and this flow is basically giving you the idea of the deformation is a kind of deformation it continues as long the force is applied initially the strength is the equal to the stress level that is required to produce a certain type of permanent fracture that's called the strength strength has several type of strength we generally test in the lab uh, like strength of a rock we generally test in the lab for uniaxial compressive strength uniaxial tensional strength and brazilian test are there other tested uh, test are there but the strength is equal to the stress at which level suppose uh, let me explain briefly very briefly suppose this is your rock sample and you are giving pressure on this rock sample at this certain portion at certain point where sigma sigma is the stress sigma is the stress okay at sigma equals to let's say sigma maximum the fracture happened then this critical condition or this threshold value would be called as a strength of that rock what is stress What's the formula for stress? Force per unit area. When you are considering limit a tends to zero, a by a, is for the infinitely small area. Okay. Um. 
now what is mineral so these things look like random i i'm i'm warning you these things look like random but uh, basi basically i'm making you familiar with these terms it will be used in your petroleum geology so what is mineral mineral is a naturally occurring solid crystalline substance and is generally inorganic substance with a specific chemical composition so it's a naturally occurring uh, um, substance like gold like quartz this type of rock you might have seen the white portion here is called quartz that's the most abundant mineral in the world 97% time you will find uh, quartz and then uh, the red one is called the k feldspar k means potash k feldspar okay so these are the minerals example of minerals so kisko minerals bolenge iron feldspar gold coal quartz these are called the minerals now what is your the minerals which, which can give you profit after selling that's called the ore if you sell quartz no one will pay you so if you are selling some mineral and you are getting enough amount of money then that's the ore so out of 2800 mineral species will be considering only 100 as ore so that's the basic difference between mineral and ore it's also the natural aggregation of one or more minerals so in a ore condition there could be uh, several minerals like iron will be there iron will be there iron, iron will appear as a um, so in the hematite you might might have another uh, minerals also so hematite most of the percentage is iron but other minerals are also existed hematite is not fully made up of iron 65% or 75% uh, i don't remember 70% is iron hematite magnetite limonite siderite these are the uh, example and it's very important to understand that's the principal sources of iron chalcopyrite and chalcosite are the principal sources of copper galena is the source for lead okay sphalerite is the source for zinc these are the name of the ores okay anyone from mining so for petrology what is rock we have discussed ore and what is rock rock is a naturally occurring and coherent aggregate of one or more minerals so it's a aggregation of minerals and such aggregates constitute the basic unit of which solid earth is composed and typically form recognizable and mapping volumes now let me start with from basic phenomenon uh, which generally see that is the volcanism volcano everyone know what happened in the volcano okay so there is a magma chamber somewhere i'll simplify this procedure so this is the volcanic crater or the mouth and there is a volcanic chamber and from this volcanic chamber actually magma comes out as lava and you know that magma has a very high temperature temperature like around 1200 degree centigrade so it's very hot okay and this when this hot magma comes out it basically solidifies in presence of the cool weather so whatever he was facing in the uh, in the soft surface of the earth when it comes out the weather is cooler comparing to this condition okay so it might be cooling rapidly or it might be cooling um, slowly but it will solidify and it will become a rock this rock is called igneous rock so the igneous rocks are formed from the magma the example of igneous rock are you might have seen granite basalt i'm writing only these two so you might have seen granite on your kitchen kitchen mein jo patthar lagta hai na kitchen top mein 
the stone we are using in the kitchen top is granite mostly uh, in the railway station people use uh, the granite block also have you seen the granite structure right granite to dekhe hoge jo kitchen ki kitchen top mein hote hain okay now now one thing happen with this igneous rock or any kind of existing rock so whatever the rock uh, we are saying that's called a name there is a name geological name that's called the country rock the rock uh, rocks are exposed and you are seeing by your naked eye or uh, which is visible in your surroundings that's called the country rock okay it's the existing rock now it is country rock for the sake of simplicity any kind of rock could be there now as far hum logo ne sirf igneous rock ke bare mein sikha to let's consider this igneous rock is there and these igneous rocks are weathered means it will be fractured it will be eroded it will be eroded away by the physical agents remember the physical geology the physical agents river wind uh glacier so river water uh, river water or sea water or any um, surface runoff or any kind of water agent or wind generally this happen in a desert kind of structure and glacier uh, that's the ice so due, due to the water wind and ice it will be eroded and it will be forming a fractured fragments or it will be forming several smaller particle so this chunk of rock will be broken into smaller particle they are of different sizes and this thing is called sediments okay now this sediment suppose a river is coming down from a hill area the from the hill area the river is for, uh, coming down and you might know in haridwar and rishikesh ganga has a uh, the flow rate is very high the velocity is very high so what will happen when the velocity is high it will erode the surrounding uh, material it will erode the because much forces are interacting the the water layer or the the water flow is uh, making or water layer is uh, giving more force on the surroundings and it is eroding the existing rock so this rock will be eroded which is coming in the contact that could be erosion could be due to the mechanical origin or it could be of chemical origin suppose in the uh, in the south indian side you might have some limestone caves and some of the caves are very famous uh, tourist destinations and these caves are made up of the chemical origin because the chemical reaction of water with the limestone caves are happening and due to this and only because of this you are having so when water is eroding that thing it's uh, making the sediments the smaller smaller particles the smaller grains and it's also carrying the particles and so for some reason let's say the velocity decreases at the flat land so what will happen and that of uh, uh, and at the flat land what will happen if the river comes down like this and the water is suspended here when the velocity decreases it will deposits the sediments here so during the monsoon season um, in the first year okay that is deposited one layer suppose this is the layer of sediments and second monsoon it will deposited another layer dusre time pe bhi deposit hota hoga lekin monsoon mein jata ho jyada hota hai let's say june in the third monsoon it will create another layer by doing so and i am talking about this depression lipo structure of let's say say 500 km wide or it's say 200 km wide this is called basin and this is also very important this term for petroleum geology how i will discuss so when we go for a petroleum exploration we generally go for a basin exploration i'll look after that is okay if they are in a basin and what's the condition of the basin what is the age of the basin every aspect is important for your petroleum geology okay so i'm talking about 200 km or 500 km wide basin so that much of sediment loads are deposited so what will happen 
due to the gravity it will be compacted it will be compacted and due to some chemical reaction it will be uh, compacted let's say so it will be compacted and it will form a rock and where you will be seeing the layers and th this is called the sedimentary rock the famous example of the sedimentary rock what is called is called the sedimentary rock the famous example of sedimentary rock is sandstone i'm writing is sst and where you can find sandstone so uh, mm, sandstone are basically used in your uh, in several forts like the bindhan sandstone one type of sandstone is there uh, according to the place if the sandstone property varies then um, according to the place we generally classify the sandstone like that like barak or sandstone is there bindhan sandstone is there so bindhan sandstone is a red color on the sandstone you generally see or usually you might have seen uh, in in several forts of rajasthan you might have seen um, sorry uh, the red color sandstone you might have seen in lal killa in delhi in the red fort so in the red fort they have used this kind of sandstone on the other hand limestone you can see where where you can see limestone you generally see limestone in pyramids so at least the faces or the kya bolte hai usko sibil ke upar upar jo dete hai na rock the rocks you were pasting uh, on on a structure at least the faces of the rocks like the sphinx structure is there pyramid structure is there these are made up of limestone locally quarried limestone they use limestone to build such a big pyramids and this type of rocks are sedimentary rock now so far we learn about the igneous rock and uh, sedimentary rock and this igneous rock and sedimentary rock uh, can uh, either either type of rock is there and under suitable pressure and temperature two thing pressure and temperature is converting whole characteristics of this rock and is forming a, a new characteristics of rock and this type of rock is called metamorphic rock so and the process is called metamorphism so metamorphism happen and this type of rock are uh, more compacted the porosity and permeability for metamorphic rock are very low so the probability of having remember this sentence so the probability of having petroleum uh, in any rock type is your sedimentary rock type you should not be ex expecting uh, any kind of petroleum are present in a metamorphic or in that case the igneous rock got it so i'll briefly introduce you to the igneous rock and its type then i'll go for the sedimentary rock i'll discuss in details about the sedimentary rock okay and later when i'll be talking about the petroleum geology there i'll be discussing how the sedimentary rocks are contributing to the to be an reservoir petroleum reservoir okay so under pressure and temperature whole thing changes and it formed uh, the metamorphic rock you have seen or you might have seen marble jo flooring ke liye use hota hai na we generally use marble for flooring taj mahal is made up of marble taj mahal you know is made up of marble so marble is a metamorphic rock and this marble is a uh, it developed after limestone generally limestone converted into marble the composition is same calcium uh, carbonate composition will be same the main uh, constituent uh, compo uh, chemical composition is uh, calcium carbonate for limestone for marble but the entire structure entire thing changes so marble could be polished a limestone you cannot polish limestone okay so it's a kind of rough kind of structure as as for appearance i'm talking about marble you could polish uh, into a shiny surface so whole structure whole grain arrangement uh, changes and 
a new type of rock form after metamorphism okay so there is a rock cycle uh, that tells the igneous rock could be the sedimentary rock sedimentary rock could be the metamorphic rock and so on so what are the igneous rock igneous rock is uh, constituents the earth crust 90 percent of the earth crust okay the chemical composition of igneous rocks are mo mostly silica SiO2 40% to 75% so I'll be saying it's acidic rock or ultra basic rock on the basis of the silica so this is the example of basalt this is obsidian this is granite okay and sometimes what happened from this magma chamber the magma comes out and form rock sometimes the magmatic rock uh, or the igneous rocks are formed within these veins uh, in that position or sometimes it is forming in a there will be a secondary out or secondary channel or secondary fissure or let's say a secondary fracture and through the secondary fracture magma will go and it will be deposit or will be cool slowly and it will form a igneous rock so when it's come out it's called the extrusive igneous rock or volcanic rock when it's formed inside that's called the intrusive igneous rock is it clear to everyone extrusive and intrusive sometimes yeah. it forms uh, uh, in the uh, forms underneath underneath the earth surface that's called the intrusive sometimes it comes out is called the extrusive okay so on the basis of silica percentage if the silica percentage is less than 45 percent it will be ultra basic if the silica is uh, percentage is greater than 65 percent it will be acidic the property of basic and ultra uh, the difference of basic and acidic the basic rocks are dark in color it's called the mafic when I'm saying a dark type of rock, that's a mafic rock, mafic igneous rock. Um, so, when this type of uh, structure, ultra mafic rock or ultra basic rock are more darker in shade than the acidic rock. Okay. On the basis of occurrence of igneous rock, as I was mentioning, that it could be classified into two types extrusive and intrusive. Extrusive igneous rocks, the example is vessel. It's called the volcanic rocks. The texture. So, what do you mean by texture? This term will be very common um, in this course because texture is the safe arrangement and um, it's it, it's uh, it's the basically the arrangement. Um, uh, could you read it? Uh, give me a minute, okay. Just read it. Uh, um, I know I am going fast uh, on these things, but I have to go fast because I have to go. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, if you didn't understand, if you couldn't understand anything, just ask me. So, extrusive igneous rocks, the example is basalt, and is uh, when the magma comes out as lava and from the rock that is extrusive igneous rock. So, extrusive igneous rock mein kya hota hai? So, in case of extrusive igneous rock, uh, actually magma contains several gases and water vapors. So, when, when it uh, comes to the cool contact or uh, comes in the contact of cool atmosphere, what will happen? It solidifies rapidly and the gases or the vapors comes out from that uh, rock and you will be seeing several hole or pore spaces okay that's happened in the extrusive igneous rock and for the crystallization it won't get uh, enough time for the crystallization so this material will be glassy totally the material will be glassy no crystal will be or less amount of crystal you will find in this extrusive igneous rock 
In case of intrusive igneous rock, the example is basalt. In ancient times, people uh, peoples were uh, using basalt to uh, build their houses. Okay, houses, church, most of the cases, basalt blocks are used. Okay. Um, but most of the cases people use just granite granite is quite a bit of expensive in case of intrusive igneous rock two things might happen intrusive means the inside rock so when the magma chamber is this it's not coming out there is a secondary how uh, from this magma center secondary uh, there should be a secondary channel and this is depositing here so it could be happening this deposition uh, of magma here or the storage of magma here will be cool off with with uh, enough amount of time so it will be taking much time to cool off because it's not coming in contact with the cool atmosphere so what will happen the crystallization will form and as much time it will get the crystal more crystal structure will be prominent that's the theory or uh, that's the background so what will happen it could be classified into two type one is plutonic which is deep, uh, which is forming at a deeper condition greater than two kilometer so if you found a uh, igneous rock at a depth greater than two kilometer on when the igneous rock formed at a depth of uh, greater than two kilometer then that's called the plutonic rock it's called plutonic and when it is uh, formed at a less than 2 km depth then it is called hyper basal. So intrusive block can be def uh, defined into two types plutonic and hyper basal. The example of plutonic type rock is uh, granite and the hyper basal is I think diorite. So plutonic ro rock is granite, gabbro and uh, grandiorite. Dark color rock means you will understand this is a basic rock. Wh uh, light color rock means it is a acidic rock. And hyperbasal rock when is formed, when magma solidifies at a medium to shallow depth less than 2 km, that is the hyperbasal rock and example is diorite. Okay. So this is the granite plutonic rock forming at a depth hyperbasal less than 2 km may form ho jata hai. and volcanic rock when magma comes out as lava and form rock do you have any question regarding this any question Dagnia, sir? yes sir how can we determine that there is intrusive rock yes yes sir. Uh, and and i i didn't uh, mention one thing that suppose these rocks are forming and uh, you might have a question that how you are saying that granite is forming at two, uh, greater than 2 km depth. We are excavating at a um, shallow level. Okay. See what happens. There are several geological processes are formed. Okay. These geological processes are uh, geological process are involved in this just like earthquake. Earthquake can do one thing upliftment of any uh, any surface or any uh, thing so it can uplift or downlift i'm not talking about the formation in this uh, or recently i'm talking about the formation happened million years ago and due to the several tectonic events means due to the earthquake due to the erosion suppose it's formed a million years ago or billion years ago any igneous rock is formed and this is exposing now because the top layer has been eroded away and it's very common that's why you are seeing then it as a shallow depth okay now what was your question how would you consider is a forming as a shallow depth a uh, shallow depth or uh, deeper depth depending on the crystallization depending on the crystallization so what will happen in the hyperbasal rock you can think of it any kind of experiment 
one one case you are cooling it rapidly okay some melted material uh, is here and you can form a crystal there so some cases you are cooling it rapidly and some cases you are giving enough time let 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 consider you are um, uh, you might have you might not have seen uh, most of you um uh gur samajhte ho usko kya bolte hai malum nahi gur samajhte ho kaise banta hai do you understand oh, uh, yes from sugar cane from sugar cane juice you are boiling up and then you are cooling sometimes you see that there is no uh, jo dana dana hota hai there is no granular things are present okay these things are happening only one condition chemistry people can enlighten us okay so crystallization how crystallization happen when you are giving enough time then the crystal size will be more prominent then the uh the, then the rapid cooling rapid cooling mein kya hota hai no crystallization will be formed so when the rapid cooling will be occurring when you have a chance that you are giving that lava or the magma a cool temperature or a cool atmosphere then only you can get finer structures so two things you will observe here two things you will observe here that one is the coarse grain structure and crystallization crystal formation these two things can only be happening when you have the slow cooling and that is only possible when your formation of igneous rock at a depth what happen in the depth it's not coming in contact in the cool uh, uh, temp uh, atmosphere suddenly so it the cooling off is happening over the time and the crystallization is formed so the plutonic rocks which are forming at a depth the plutonic rock has a more coarse grain structure than the hypervessel rock than the volcanic rock so plutonic has more coarse grain structure more crystal formation than the hypervessel than the volcanic okay by this way you can understand this is form uh, forming at a depth okay this is common uh, conclusion now uh, igneous rocks has several forms that igneous intrusion may happen in such a way it can a cross cutting relationship with the existing structure or it may flow parallel to the structure so when is a cross cutting relationship is called the dike like this okay i'm giving you just brief example read it from the ppt i'll provide it to you so this type of structure is called dike so dike could be look like this also it could be a radiating dike it could be a quitting dike uh, this could be a cone sheet so this is the example of a uh, ring dike it's from the south southern africa uh, national park example okay and the width you can consider is up to 300 km 200 to 300 km okay so that much of igneous intrusion happen in a ring shape okay so there is a seal seal structure is when the igneous rock or the magma is flowing along the bedding planes that's called the seal it's for your understanding so this is granite so this structure is granite okay this is cyanide or it, this is diorite diorite is a hypervessel rock okay now these are the example of the igneous rock now the most important one is the sedimentary rock it's a petroleum bearing rock this rocks has a potential to become a reservoir and how these are formed these are formed by the weathering of the existing rock 
So, 5 percent of the earth crust is sedimentary rock and the example of sedimentary rock are cell. Cell is very important for petroleum in geology, how that will be discussed, ok. So, I will, I am just making you familiar with this kind of rock. So, sedimentary rocks often have a distinctive layering or bedding and how the beddings are developed, I have already discussed. This is the sandstone, this is limestone, ok. So, the formation of sedimentary rocks has three stage, uh, stages, weathering and erosion, sedimentation, lithification and diagenesis. So, in case of weathering and erosion, pre-existing rocks will be shattered and it will make sediments, means small small uh, final gain uh, particles and that particle will be deposited at a place. When it is deposited at a place, the process of accumulation of sedimentation sediments is called the sedimentation. So, pile small small uh, fragments create hua, then it will be depositing at a uh, basin or basinal structure, then it will be compacted and cemented together. So, there will be some chemical reaction in between them and there is a semi a cemented uh, a precipitation will be there. Mostly the cemented precipitation are quartz. So, this third step is the lithification and diagenesis. So, lithification due to the gravity or due to the uh, overlying load, the entire strata uh, or the entire deposition of sedimentary um, structure or sediments, the entire deposition of sediment will be compacted. It is also called the consolidation when the loose sediments are called the unconsolidated sediments. So, when the consolidation happen, it will become a compacted sedimentary rock. Another thing can happen that is the diagenesis, it is a physical and chemical changes of the sediments and in between the layers you will have a cemented material. It may happen due to the water uh, rock interaction, it may happen, ok. Uh, it may happen uh, due to microbial activity, it may happen due to other chemical reaction, mostly uh, quartz and other things are uh, deposited and uh, this includes three processes, compaction, cementation, recrystallization. So, ok, so compaction means you are giving the load and you are compacting the layers. Just read it from there, um, cementation when the chemical precipitation uh, cementation and hardening is the welding of the clastic sediments. So, what is clastic sediments and why these are relevant to the uh, petroleum geology, ok. So, clastic sediments uh, condition may kya hota hai? there is a precipitation of chemical of quartz, iron oxide, bedite, anhydride, geolite and clay material and that will be acting as a um, common cementing material and it is called the cement. So, cement is a glue kind of structure, it is help uh, the layers or mineral grains to stick together. Recrystallization happen only in the gypsum or limestone condition. Some of the rock consolidated chiefly, but recrystallization of their constituents, ok. So, that is happen in case of gypsum. Sedimentary rocks can be classified into two types. See, these things are uh, looking like I'm going very fast. Uh, let's do one thing. Let's stop it here for today because this part is very important for um, the petroleum geology course. So let's stop it here uh, today, and in your next class. Um, I will be discussing um, about the sedimentary rock classification and the structural features, so that you will be understanding whenever I will be using these terms, it will be very convenient for you to understand. So, will we use the same link for the next class? Yes, yeah, same link, but uh, 